Okay. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Restored Motions, restoredmotions.com. And Procharge EV, ProchargeEV.com. All right, y'all. Good morning. Hope y'all had a uh, great Saturday. Uh, it was a long, unconventional day, to say the very least. But as it ends, uh, the Tigers are one win away from Omaha. They beat Kentucky 14 to nothing, uh, as he has been all season. Paul Skeens was brilliant. Seven and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, did not allow a run, just four hits. One of those actually was a bloop to center where Dylan Cruz slipped. Uh, otherwise, it would have been three hits. Uh, nine strikeouts, just the one walk, and uh, on 101 pitches, and he got his uh, his standing ovation there as um, <clears throat> as Paul or uh, as Jay Johnson lifted him there with two outs of the eighth, so he could get his ovation. Uh, Blake Money pitched the ninth, and said many times here, uh, the only way that we'd see guys like Blake Money or Sam Dodd, I don't want to list the names, but you know what I mean, uh, is if you're up ten or down ten, so uh, or up fourteen, as it happened to be. So, yeah. Um, Great night for the Tigers. Uh, six home runs on the night um, with uh, Skeens' nine strikeouts. He moves, uh, he's in uh, sole possession of second place behind Ben McDonald on the single season list. Uh, as a team, LSU now holds the single season record for strikeouts by a pitching staff in a season. Um, with the six home runs last night, uh, this team now third all time in strikeouts in a, uh, excuse me in home runs in a single season. So, um, really just a, a a fun night where LSU dominated from start to finish. Trey Morgan homered in the bottom of the first, and uh, Paul Skeens was just cruising. At one point, I think I looked up and he was at. Uh, 39 pitches through four innings. Um, keep in mind, you want to be in the 12 to 15 pitch per inning range. So you would have expected through through four, he'd be at 48 to 60 pitches, somewhere in that range. And instead, he's at 39. I tweeted, boy, it's going to be a long night for these Kentucky hitters because they ain't chasing him out of the game. It was a completely different approach, right? Their approach the first go-round was um, work his – work Paul Skeens' pitch count, get him out of the game. They got him out in the sixth because uh, he was at like 111 pitches. Now he struck out 13 batters, but LSU also scored 14 runs through the first three innings. That was the first go around. This time they took a very different approach. They were see, they were f uh, fastball hunting early in counts, and as soon as they saw one, they swung. And they got themselves out more often than not with weak contact, so it allowed Skeens to be even more efficient. So uh, anyway, so really cool. Um, uh, really cool uh, to see Paul Skeens have that outing for his last outing. And then offensively, LSU was just magnificent, man. They, when you score 14 runs on 15 hits, it's kind of hard to be more efficient than that. So, you know, six homers will do it. Two homers each by Trey Morgan and Tommy White. Uh, Gavin Dugas homered. Josh Pearson homered. Um, it was just a, or it was just a really fun night. Uh, it was a pretty awful day going through the weather delay. And um, it was actually pretty embarrassing. So for the second consecutive weekend, there's been a, a hint of controversy, for lack of better, a better word, you know, phrase. But, um, you know, to to be just about ready to go play at, at 2 o'clock and, you know, under sunshiny, beautiful blue skies to clear the field and to send the teams back, get Kentucky back to their hotel and LSU back to its dorm rooms or wherever they were going, you know, apartments. Um, it... It was just pretty atrocious, um, and I, I get it. I know what what they were doing. Uh, Jay said it on Friday. Uh, Jay said it point blank on Friday. If we don't have a window to play the game, we're not going to play it. Talk to the NCAA uh, on-site official who he said, look, what happened on Sunday, meaning, um, well, actually, if you don't hear it, I'll play it for you. Hang on. I'll, I'll play exactly what Jay said. Um, So this is what Jay Johnson said on. So this is what Jay Johnson said on Friday, 
his last availability. It was very good for a lot of reasons that we were able to win the regional and we have a really good uh, tournament rep here, um, Greg Seitz, and he was here last weekend as well. And I was able to go to him afterwards on Monday and just like, hey, like this worked out for us, but like we can't start a game like we did on Sunday and then have that happen. Now, nobody's perfect, and I get there's pop-ups and this and that, but, like, th- th- there's too much on the line, and um, you have to be really diligent in doing what's best for the, the players, not just for their safety. That's the first and foremost importance, but for the integrity of the game, and that's that's super important, and I'm pretty sure uh, Coach Mengione would tell you the same thing. Do oh, openers factor into this at all? I'm sorry? Do openers, does that idea kind of... Um, yeah, but I think we'll, I think, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to watch it all the way up till game time. Uh, we will not start the game unless we have a window to play the game. We will not start the game unless we have a window to play the game. Um, I mean, Jay told you on Friday, point blank. He talked to the NSA rep and like, look, it won, it worked for us because we won the regional. Talking about Floyd, you know, Floyd started but after three innings, he was shelved. And he's like, look, this worked for us, but this cannot happen. So... You looked at what was in the forecast, and there was a chance that maybe that weather comes and you start skeins and he doesn't get a full outing in. And so they made a collaborative decision, apparently, to shut it down. And it was embarrassing. Uh, We have all watched a ton of baseball over the course of our lives, and I can never remember a day ever at any level where I saw that, right? I mean, mostly it's, hey, let's go, let's get it in, let's get in what we can get in before the rain comes and all that sort of of stuff, but uh, it's part of it. So that happens, and then ultimately, of course, they they get on the field, and um, and LSU takes care of business, man. What a game. I mean, the... uh, (laughs) uh, Of course, you know, Hunter Fournette, see ya. What a jackass. You're such a loser. Uh... He's like, 14 nothing. Matt wants to talk about the weather. If you were here for the first 10 minutes of the show, I talked about the game. You can't talk about that game without talking about the weather. Like, I, brother, I'm going to tell you something, man. And, and I hope you're still there because I'll say this real quick. And then if you want to leave, you can leave. I cannot understand ever in my life why someone would intentionally seek out content just to be a jackass. I cannot understand why you would actually spend minutes of your life that you can never get back, ever. Like the minute that just passed, you can, you can never get it back. I cannot understand why you would spend minutes of your life on a beautiful Sunday morning just to come and be critical and watch something you don't like. Brother, there's so much content out there. There's so many people that create content. Go away. Go find something you like. Go find something that's going to make you happy, where you can spread joy and, and, and things like that into the world instead of being... Just a, a beacon of like negativity all the time. Like, I don't know why you're here. I, I'm not going to block you. If you want to hang out, hang out. But like, I just don't understand you, man. Like, go, go do something positive in your life. Go watch someone you like. I don't know what else to tell you, man. Like, you're wasting your life. You are wasting minutes of your life you can never get back. Like, I cannot imagine spending time of my life with a wife, with a son, with a a job, with a lot going on in my life. I cannot imagine spending minutes of my life, especially on a beautiful Sunday like this. I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine wasting my life doing something that just brings negativity into my life. So brother, like go do, go do something, go do something positive. Like go just Hang out if you want. That's cool. But more than anything, regardless, because, like, I'm going to keep doing my thing, right? Like, I'm going to be here, and I'm going to do Morning Scone, and there's going to be a lot of people watching, as there are right now. Um, I'm going to go do my show tomorrow. I'm going to expand into two more markets two weeks from tomorrow. I'm going to keep winning awards and making good money and doing all the things I do. And I really encourage you just to go find happiness in your life. Like, I cannot imagine, I just cannot imagine wasting your life doing something you don't like. So, okay, spoke my piece there. And I did say jackass, so my apologies to everybody who's got kids watching. All right, let's say some good mornings here to everybody. 
uh, I don't know how you could do a show talking about yesterday without talking about a seven hour, an unprecedented seven hour weather delay where there was no weather. So, all right. Uh, Dad, good morning. Kelly Gross, good morning. Ryan Amanda Guidry, Scott Beckham, uh, Bubba Smith. By the way, thanks to everybody who uh, who came out to Don Juan. It was a great, it was a fun day. Uh, well, it was a split day. So we showed up at Don Juan and we were getting ready to start at two. And then um, right at two, of course, is when they delayed it. And so we left and then came back. And I know a lot of people were there. My guy Jeff came in from the North Shore. Uh, shout out to Dane Bergeron, who came in from Lake Charles uh, for the day. Um, it was a lot of fun, man. We had a great time at Don Juan for everybody who came. Thanks for being there. We appreciate y'all. Um, let's see, Bubba Smith, Bubba Tatum. Uh, do you think the Bats wake up? <laughs> Rough game last night. Do you think the Bats wake up today? LOL. Jeff McKithen, what's up? Matt Godwin, what's going on? Um... Where are we? Oh man. Well, we already got tons of comments. Cool. I'll do my best to, to, uh, to work through them all. So y'all fire away. Uh, let's see. Peter Fenner. Good morning. Trivia Carter's Trey Morgan becoming a five tool guy. Good question. Trivia. And you know, like they always say power is the last of the five tools to come. Um, and you know, Trey with one more homer will hit double digits, um, for the season. And, uh, I think he's he's had that power stroke, but I don't know that that's ever that's really like what they've wanted him to do in his career. So it'd be interesting, probably like in whatever organization he gets drafted into, what do they want him to do? Like, do they want him to develop more power? Like, he had six as a freshman, five last year, and now he's at nine this season. So he can. Uh, it's just not necessarily always been his role. His role is to, has been get on base for the run producers that come behind him. But uh, but sure, man, I think that would certainly continue to, to come, you know. Um, was anyone else mesmerized by the animated conversation taking place behind T-Bob last night? I, man, look, getting that show, so we did not have an on-site tech last night for Whiskey and Wine. And for those who were hanging out, waiting for post-game, apologies, so Don Juan closes at 12. So we, when it looked like they were going to play the game at nine, we hurried up, set everything up, and tried to get in as much of a pregame show as we could, which ended up being about half an hour. But that's why we couldn't go on past or for a postgame. Now we've done that before for football, but it's with plenty of of a uh, of a um, of lead time, so they can prepare their stuff. Like the bar still closes at twelve, but they let us stay until we're done with the show. But that just would have been fair yesterday because their staff who got there early to open at two, you got there at one thirty. Like they were thinking we were going to be done probably post game at six, six 30 ish. And so then we didn't, the game doesn't even start till nine. So that that's why we, we weren't able to do a post game last night. We kind of hurried up and did a, a weather delay sort of pregame type deal. Um, Gregory Gordy, uh, Delton do said, good morning, Migo Tez, Bruce Shales. What's up? Um, Let's see. Uh, Murder Giraffe, what's going on? Mike the Tiger L shoes, so dominant found mercy rules don't happen in this part of the season. Yeah, there's no <laughs> there's no there's no mercy rules in uh um uh there's uh there are no mercy rules in um in uh in the postseason. You gotta get all twenty seven outs. ML Fody, one of the most dominant performance of seeing the whole team was lights out. Um yeah, man, I mean look. They were they were pretty magnificent yesterday, uh, hitting one through nine. I think only two guys in the starting lineup didn't have a base hit. Uh, it was um, Travinsky didn't have a hit, although he was hit by pitch and and walked. And uh, Beloso Beloso was the other reserve for four last night. Let's see. Smash that like button if you would. Cliff Nelson, good morning. Good times at Don Juan. Nothing better than lemon cookies and coffee on a Sunday morning. So Erica made her lemon cookies and uh, brought them Don Juan. Cliff snagged his lemon cookies, no doubt. Matthew Rodriguez, good to see Dugas get the homer. 
He homered last week as well in the regional. But, yeah, for a final weekend at the box. And, look, today, we hope all – well, hope today will be – we'll talk about today's game. Um, we uh, we all hope that today's game will be the last one of the season, uh, which means, of course, LSU would win and punch our ticket to, uh, to Omaha. Five o'clock, first pitch. Of course, we'll see Ty Floyd on the bump for the Tigers tonight. Uh, and then you close it out however you have to, it, you know, if it's Thatcher Hurd or Gavin Guidry or whatever it may be, depending on how it's got to go. But you hope it's, you know, it'll be the final game at the box for a lot of those those veteran guys, for for Dugas, for uh, for Beloso. And then, of course, for all the the underclassmen who are, are going to be drafted, Cruz, Skeens, uh, Morgan, Thompson, prob- probably Joe Bear, another Louisiana guy who will probably be playing his last game at the box, hopefully today as well, so. Gregory Gordy said, I had to work last night. Couldn't see the whole game. To, did Kentucky use their ace? So um, so here's the, the weird thing about, um, about Kentucky. So they don't necessarily have an ace. So, but, but, but yes. So the guy who pitched last night, Zach Lee, was second on their team in ERA. Uh, the guy who leads their team in ERA um, is, uh, is a reliever. So... Um, but Zach Lee had been pitching second. So Travis Smith had been throwing first in the rotation. Zach Lee, who's been their best guy, had been throwing second. So they threw him first opposite Skeens. And they look, they were trying to go win, win this game. And they threw out the, the guy who had been their best guy this year. Um, and Zach Lee gave up nine runs in four innings. They're just, the thing about Kentucky, and I, you know, we said it yesterday, but they're just, this just isn't a great team. Kentucky, like Kentucky's won some games this year and good for them. Um, they really face planted late in the season, but um, uh, they're just they don't hit for power. Uh, they are pesky on the bases, and they've got a lot of arms that stepped up for them late in the season. But they don't have a dominant arm. They don't have really a dominant bat. There's just you don't. They're they're just they're a solid team that that is just I think a little overwhelmed right now by a much more talented team is probably the way to say it. LSU got a good draw. Uh, you know, we, for all we talked about, would Kentucky having played here before help them? You know, having been in the environment, I don't think Kentucky like folded in the environment. I just think they got beat by a much better team. Jesse Brown, more Matt, great game. Do you think the hit parade continues tonight? Um, yeah, there's no reason not to. So. Um, I assume it's going to be Travis Smith tonight for Kentucky. And, um, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't have any reason to believe really that LSU wouldn't just continue to hit the baseball the way they have. I mean, it is baseball and you can hit a ball 404 feet and it could be an out, you know, you can hit a ball five feet and you can get on base. So, I mean, it's baseball and weird things can and do happen, but man, LSU's lineup sure looked locked in yesterday. And, you know, it's one of the – I feel like today could be one of those games where um, if the – if you have a, a, a crack in the dam early, you could break their back early. Um, I remember the, the final game at the old box against um, against Cal Irvine was on a Monday night. And, uh, and LSU won it like, know, like 21 to 5 or something like that. And uh, – and they got started with, with, I think they hit a homer in the for like a three run homer in the first inning and got up and then it just it just never stopped. So, um, as far as um, who we probably see tonight for uh, for Kentucky, I mentioned Travis Smith. He's got a, an ERA of five two eight. Um, you know, he started twelve games. He's probably going to be their guy. But it's one of those things where if, where if you're Nick Mangione, you realize like you can't just stick with a guy if he's struggling. So you have Mason Moore is the reliever I talked about who is who leads their staff in ERA and actually gave him a five inning relief outing in their regional clincher uh, last week when they had to come out of the losers bracket and he was really good and he's got an ERA sub two but he's thrown uh, fifty innings on the season and I think that five inning outing is as long of the year so you may see something where they go Travis Smith to start and then you know. If LSU's getting to him, they go to Mason Moore. Or maybe they start Mason Moore today. Like, it may be a thing where if you're Nick Mingione, you don't have the luxury of saying, let me hold my best guy to see if we can get to him. Maybe you start Mason Smith, or Mason, Mason Smith, Mason Moore today. Um, 
Let's see. Kevin Williams. <laughs> Scott, what's your recommendation on alcohol while in Cancun? Tequila. Tequila or rum, right? Rachel Goff did uh, Kentucky's ace pitch yesterday. Okay, we kind of talked about that just there. So um, the guy who threw yesterday is was their best arm, uh, Zach Lee. But uh, he, but he was going. He had been going second in their rotation, but he was their best guy. That's why they threw him opposite schemes. They were trying to win it. So their best arm remaining is Mason Moore, but he's a reliever. So we'll see if uh, if they go to him. Bob Poole, enjoy the whiskey wine rain delay show. Thank you. What a pregame simulation after a disaster of decisions related to errors. Like that's the point. I mean, I know I went off on the guy earlier, but it's like. Um, <laughs> Ryan Dixon should move so technically have to buy another dinner. I think so. Um, but, it, but it's, you know, but it's, I don't know how you can talk about yesterday without discussing the weather. Um, Brett DeGroe, Morna Matt left the box yesterday at eight o'clock delay only to get home and see we're playing at nine Oh five. What a poop show. It was, I mean, for all parties involved, I know after the game, Jay said, uh, they were content with the decisions and how it played. Um, Of course he is. They won the game 14 to nothing. <laughs> I mean, uh, they won the game. They were one away from Omaha. Of course he's happy how it played out. Um, but it, and it's not even with the benefit of hindsight. I mean, you had beautiful blue skies. You had uh, a clear path. There was a cell, a storm cell around Lafayette. And even by the time it looked like it might have gotten here, um, you would have been nearly two hours into the game. So, I mean, you would have been able to stretch Skeens, you know, into the into the sixth inning thereabouts anyway. So we all get it. Anyway, Russell Doloff, good morning uh, from the 3-1 great. Okay, all right. Brett Gidry, what's up, Austin Kidder? Good morning. Go Tigers and go Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Tigers proving grow man baseball is superior to small ball. Uh, Samuel Smith, morning, Matt. LSU is going to be up enough to give Cruz... And the crew a curtain call. Um, I don't know. Uh, look, I think, you know, when it's pretty apparent, if LSU's winning tonight, when it's apparent that it'll be Dylan's last at bat, he'll get a, a giant standing ovation. I have no doubt of that. And, and oh, by the way, with his two for four night last night, uh, Dylan Cruz did bump his average one point. So from 432 to 433. So he remains two points ahead of Ray Frimes right now for the other uh, single season record. Uh, how did the players and fans survive the horrible sh sunshine yesterday? Uh, Jason H., top of the morning. Damn, that was a long day. Justin Marquez, good morning. Kyle Milliken, obviously the Tigers killed the ball last night. It was great to see, but do you sort of wish it was closer and Kentucky would have tried to use more pitchers? No, Kyle, I don't. I mean, at this point, it's pretty evident. Like, Kentucky isn't... I, they're... No. I mean... No, I don't. I'm quite. I'm quite content with LSU winning the game fourteen to nothing. Uh, there's as far as what happened on the field yesterday. There is nothing to nitpick. I mean, you uh, you pounded out fourteen runs. You had six homers. Paul Skeens was magnificent. Uh, you didn't have to use any of your arms, which is sort of the flip side to your question. So I mean, because it was that big of a disparity. You know, and Skeens went seven and two thirds. You didn't have to use anybody else, so you have everybody at your disposal except for Skeens to try to win two games or win one game in the next two days. So, um, Tiger Diver Guy Brooks, good morning. Um, <laughs> Jason H. Everyone kept giving me compliments on my LSU dunks last night. Those are shoes, by the way. Uh, for those that don't know. Eric Wilder out of morning. Matt, curious if last weekend's Skeen's decision and this weekend's game start issues has changed your perception of Jay Johnson, back-to-back mind-boggling situations. Uh, Eric, I don't think it's changed my perception of Jay Johnson. Um, and to be very clear, like, ultimately, the, the decision yesterday was, like, the NCAA on-site official ultimately made the decision in collaboration with Jay Johnson, Nick Mingione, and as Jay said, post game, the national weather service, like they were in communication with the national weather service. So, uh, I think, look, Jay is a phenomenal recruiter. Obviously he has assembled and he has assembled the most talented team in the country. 
Um, I don't know anyone other than unmitigated uh, total purple and gold homers that were on board with the decision to start Skeens against Tulane last week. So that was unconventional. Um, and yesterday's rain delay, I think, was a failure on a lot of different fronts. But, you know, I changed my perception. I don't think so. I don't think he's changed my perception of Jay Johnson. Um, it, it's his program. He can run it how he wants, and there are many different ways to to coach and lead and all that sort of stuff. So um, I just disagreed with the Skeens decision last week, and then yesterday was just a oh. – but that, again, that wasn't just Jay. That was – I'm sure that was collaborative. It was just a failure on everybody's part. Um, let's see. PTG Toasty, what's going on? Bo Revere, what's going on? Give me more 9 p.m. starts. The box is rocking. Antron Hemingway, what's up? Bo Revere had football game vibes. Uh, hey, man, when they got up, or when LSU got up early, when Morgan hit the homer, um, and the student section hat tip to the student section right field. They were rowdy, which is really cool to see as well. Uh, look great on TV. Yeah, man. I mean, postseason baseball, there's like every sport has its own sort of uniqueness, right? Like um, every sport has its own thing that makes it cool. Uh, but postseason baseball is something where like you hang on every pitch, like every, every strike, every ball, there's like this exhalation with every pitch. It's just, you know, it, it, like the intensity ratchets up with everything a way it doesn't during the regular season. So, um, Bo, why do you keep posting it had football game vibes like over and over again? <laughs> Bro, you posted that like 30 times. We see it. I read it. We see it. It had football game vibes. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> Peter, whiskey and wine last night was the role reversal. T. Bob was being rational. Scone was going on angry, angry tangents. Uh, let's see. Uh, y'all smash the like button if you would. Uh, subscribe up to the channel. Appreciate y'all for being there. Mike is the Charles Oliveira. I had Oliveira in that fight. Did he win? I didn't get. I was obviously watching baseball last night. I did not get to see the fight. Um, and so I did see Nunez won. Um, yeah, we'll come back to it. That's I know that's not what people are here today. Um, smash the like button if you would. If you're new, please subscribe to the channel. Facebook, please like the Matt Moscona page, share the post. Um, Devin Kelly, good morning. Clint Phillips. Uh, Earl Hardwin, good morning. I'm really behind on comments, y'all. I know that. My apologies. I'm going to try to catch up a little bit if I can. Uh, Bo said, if we win it all, is Skeens baseball's version of Joe Burrow? Um, I, you know, that's, that's an interesting comp. I don't know, um... Uh, I don't know that I would say that. Um, it's really just hard to compare sports like that. Um, but yeah, I I don't know, man. I I don't know that we're gonna look at Paul Skeens and say that's the greatest player in the history of the program. Um, may I mean maybe maybe people will. I I you know how we'll look back on this season in. You know, fifty years, twenty years, ten years, next, you know, whatever. All, excuse me. I think also depends on how it finishes. You know, so they they go to Omaha and win it. Then I think you start to have those conversations. But I know a talking point we've had here a lot of times over the years is there have been so many great players that have come through this program that, by and large, are forgotten in a big sense because they didn't win the last one. Um, I don't mean to say it that way, but like. Look at all the first rounders that went on to have really great MLB careers, but that that didn't win a national championship here. So, 
you know, like I always think about Aaron Hill. You know, I mean, Aaron Hill was a, was a first round pick. He was an all star in Major League Baseball, played something like 13, 14 seasons. I mean, he was magnificent. And people don't mention Aaron Hill when they talk about the greatest players ever to come through LSU because he played in the smoke years and those teams just weren't great. Um, so, you know, but, but you remember a guy like Jason Williams, who was a phenomenal baseball player, was a four-year starter, left LSU as the all-time hits leader, and won two, uh, he, J-Dub was a freshman in 93, so he bookended his career with championships in 93, and I said, Blair Barbier. You know, Blair Barbier, a guy who was on AFR with us on Friday, you know, didn't play Major League Baseball, but, uh, you know, started for four years, came in as a freshman, started on that 97 team, was the captain of the 2000 team, won two national championships, and you remember, like, you see what I mean? Like, we, we, we remember and set legacies around this program based on national titles, and fair or unfair, that's just what it is. So, um, if, when you start talking about what's Cruz's legacy going to be, what Skeens' legacy going to be, they got to go win in Omaha. Um, <laughs> Aaron Hornsby delay for a chance of sunshine. Jeremy Fontana, Deborah Coward, good morning. Uh, Ron St. Pierre, John Cunningham. Speaking of Duga, looking for your opinion. You and I had our disagreements with Duga at leadoff during SEC play. Would rather Cruz at leadoff or Duga? Or Duga, sorry. Yeah, so John, I mean, my feeling is still the same. I, I think I would like to see, it's not to say Dylan can't lead off. He's obviously done it, and there's reasons that you do it. Um, when the lineup turns over, you're guaranteeing Dylan another at bat, um, having him at the top of the order. And when you have Pearson at the bottom of the order, it's like having back-to-back -back leadoff guys. So I, I understand why they're doing it. And they, you know, when he started to skate a little bit, they moved him up in the orders to try to get him more fastballs and have Tommy White behind him. I, I get it. I get why he's there. And he's, he could lead off at the next level. Um, it's just that on this team, I like Cruz and White back-to-back -back in the middle of the order. Now you have Travinsky hitting the way he is. You could go Cruz, White, Travinsky. You put Morgan in the two hole, seeing fastballs. If you let off with, with Dugas, who has the second highest or third highest on base percentage on the team, it's like, it's like Cruz and then like uh, Beloso and Dugas because they, they know how to get on base. They'll get hit by pitch, they'll walk, they have good at bats. And, Anyway, so my point is, I like getting those guys on base for the run producers like Cruz and Tommy White, that's all. But I don't think that, I think either's fine. I mean, it's, Dylan Cruz at batting leadoff is, is perfectly fine. Uh, Bob Poole, enjoy the Whiskey Mine Rain Delay show. Thank you, man. Uh... Uh, Ryan Dixon, Matt, do you feel like the box was a football game environment? Um, T-Bob on a throwback LSU jersey looks like modern-day Babe Ruth. Patrick Kaysen, what's going on? Uh, Matt, what did you think of Jay Johnson using the worthless in-game coach's interview to recruit by saying he hopes all the players in the transport are watching the environment? So, Patrick, unfortunately, we were at Don Juan, and I didn't have audio on the game, so I did not hear Jay's in-game interview. Um, but... I think that's awesome. <laughs> Why not? What that would be the most that would be the most beneficial use of that moment because there's nothing you're gonna glean from the in-game interview anyway. So that yes, great. Mark Reynolds, what's up? Uh, Charlie Humphreys, what's up? Who do you have for the Golden Spikes Award? Um, my, so I think Cruz is the best player. I think Skeens has had the best season and probably should win it. I'm a little nervous about Jack Caglione, and I hate to say it, but we've seen two-way guys win it before. Um, the kid from Louisville a couple of years ago was a two-way guy. Uh, we saw A.J. Reed in 2014 win it when Aaron Nola should have won it um, because Reed was Kentucky's ace and also led the SEC in homers, and Jack Caglione's hit 31 homers. He leads the SEC in homers, and he's a starting pitcher with an ERA of three. So I am worried that Cruz and Skeen split votes, and that Caglione wins it. I'm really, really, really worried about that. But my hope, to the counterpoint, um, is that voters all over the country have known Dylan Cruz's name for three years, and it is impossible not to know Paul Skeen's at this point, that voters in other regions um, 
will know those two guys and maybe just aren't as familiar with Caglione. But I've seen it before, man. That's the one thing that's got me nervous is we've seen two-way guys win this award before over guys who you might feel are more deserving. So I just I want to see one of the LSU guys win the Golden Spikes. I mean, Ben won it obviously in 89 as LSU's only winner, and I'd, I'd love to see I'd love to see it again. Uh, Tim Pierce, Jeff G, Tommy settled down after regionals and exploded. Yeah, man, that was great to see. You, he was pressing last week. I, by his own admission, I'm sure Tommy White would tell you he was pressing. He was trying to join the hit parade and trying to do too much, and last night he was awesome. The homer he hit to left, um, the one he hit over the, um, the, the one he hit in the third inning, that he hit over the bleed, after Cruz had sort of like the swinging bunt and then White homered over the left field uh, landing. Um... That was an incredible piece of hitting. That was not a bad pitch. That was a breaking ball down and away. And for a guy that has great opposite field power like Tommy White, he went down and pulled that ball from, it was down and away and pulled it over the left field bleachers. That was pretty incredible. So uh, great piece of hitting by Tommy White. Uh, Antonius Herman Scone, thanks for... Good morning, Scone. I listen to this in AFR every day. Cool. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for being here. Uh, 413 watching live. That is awesome. If you would, please smash the like button. Uh, if you're new, please subscribe up on the YouTube channel. And as always, brought to, brought to you by Hudco. I got Hudco pinned in the chat. If all that uh, terrible weather that rolled through yesterday did any roof damage, we'd love to come help you out with a free no obligation roofing inspection. Uh, Hudco roofing, but in all seriousness, last weekend we did have hail, we had awful weather, and I know there were parts of Louisiana that did get hit. Remember, Hudco covered the whole state of Louisiana, so uh, please, um, uh, you know, if you find yourself in need of a roof or any roofing issues, we'd love to help you out. Hudco roofing and Hudco roofing.com, pinned in the chat, both Facebook and YouTube, right there. Um, Drew looked like he didn't understand the weather, and yeah, he didn't know what was going on. Glenn Crowd is what's going on. Is the 5 o'clock start originally scheduled, or is because of the late start yesterday? So, Glenn, you got to remember, um, the only game that had a set start time was game one because it, it all they have to make everything fit. But keep in mind, you never know on the third day of Super Regionals how many games there's going to be. So, like, two teams have already punched their ticket to Omaha. Um, you know, TCU uh, clinched and, uh, and Florida clinched. But, and so you've got six other teams that have to play today. And you also have the Tennessee Southern Miss game that has to finish the restart from yesterday and then play the second game today as well. So you get seven games today. So until the networks know how many games they're going to have to play in a given day and who, what games they're going to play and all the things like start time and when did the, the game the day before finish, all that stuff. Um, they, they don't know. So it wasn't, that wasn't determined until last night, but you could look at everything in total and say, okay, well, they play past midnight. Let's give them a later start on, on, on Sunday. We can make it work based on networks and everything. The game is on ESPN two today, by the way. Uh, baby Bobby, good morning. Um, beans. Good morning. Chihuahua one. I was busy with the I was busy with life, turned on the media to see the game. A little surprised because of the weather delay. I'd been outside sweating, not far from LSU, but happy for the win. Samuel Smith, remember the idiots were saying this team had no shot at making it out of regionals because they lost one game. You know, Samuel, I got to decide today if LSU, when LSU beats Kentucky today, as I assume they will, do I go back on Twitter and do I go back and find all the people who uh, said the bullpen sucks, they don't hit in the clutch, they're not going to win a regional uh, blah, 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 blah. Like, should, like, should I actually go and do a little, um, like, revisionist history with those folks? Um, this has been a great lesson and a reminder as, yeah, I'll say, as I said all year, um, it's baseball. You can't get too high with the wins. You can't get too low with the losses. They play an enormous sample size. That's why you have to stay even keeled. Every team loses games. Every team loses weekends. Yes, the low point was losing the home series to Mississippi State when you blew a nine-run lead on Mother's Day. Yes, that was awful. There's no getting around that. That also doesn't mean that you can't win the College World Series when that happens. Losing midweek games, nobody wants to see LSU lose a midweek game. They also don't matter, as I've said over and over and over and over again. This is a team that's got to play its way through the winner's bracket. They did so in the regional. They won yesterday. They get to Omaha after they win today, hopefully. 
they'll win their first game behind Skeens and play their way into a winner's bracket. And, you know, they got a great shot as long as they play their way through a winner's bracket. I'll continue to maintain this team cannot come out of the loser's bracket unless if they have somebody do something extraordinary. Um, and I'll just have to see that to believe it. So, But in the meantime, let's go get one more win. And then maybe I will just tee off on everybody on Twitter. Uh, Clint, good morning. Glad to see Tommy White get out of his funk. Hunter Broadhead, good morning. Do you think Napier would get fired at floor if he won five games? I, Hunter, we'll talk about that another day. Marshall Andrews, good morning. Nikki C, consider the dominant performance last night. What do you expect from LSU in game two? Um, I, look, we'll see Ty Floyd. And remember, Floyd, um, uh, Floyd against Kentucky the first time had a great start. Um, that game started with LSU getting out to a big lead early. Uh, scored one in the first, two in the second, three in the fourth. So it was like, it was, uh, it was six to nothing through four. And Floyd um, had pitched well. He gave up a, a two-run homer to Stanky. So it was, it was six to two. And they went into the top of the fifth. And if you remember, ugh, this was so annoying. They go into the top of the fifth, and it looked like LSU was going to get out of a jam. And Tommy White booted the ground ball at third, and then they hit the fly ball to Joe Barron right, and he overran it. And because it was ground out, single, fielder's choice. So you have two on, uh, one on, two outs. Then they went walk. So two on, two outs, single run scores. Then Herring came in to pitch for Floyd. It's six to three at that point. They bring in Herring. Tommy White committed the error. And then Joe Bear overran the ball. And then Stanky sing singled up the middle. And that allowed the next run to score. And they were up seven to six. So you should have been in the dugout, up six to two, pounding the baseball, feeling good about yourself. And error on Tommy White, Joe Bear overrunning the ball, and all of a sudden you're down seven to six. My point is, Ty Floyd pitched well in that game. Uh, he got you, you know, through the first four innings. Um, and I would say Ty Floyd today is dramatically better even than he was there. He got you four and two thirds, and but for the you know the fielding errors, like the stat line would have looked much better. And I think if Ty Floyd can get you four or five innings tonight, knowing you've got Hurd and Herring and Ackenhausen and Guidry and Cooper and whoever else you want behind him, uh, as long as your offense is there, you should be fine tonight. Mark Davis, morning, Matt. Thanks for putting out stellar content. Look forward to you going live. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you for being here. Uh, what does Kentucky's bullpen look like for game two and maybe game three? So Kentucky is deep. They've got a lot of arms that they, that they like. Uh, I'll continue to remind you for those maybe that just joined us. Um, their, uh, their best arm is a guy named Mason Moore. He's a reliever. Uh, he's got a sub two ERA, uh, had his long outing of the season last week in regionals, pitched twice in regionals, but came out of the bullpen in the regional clincher and threw five innings and was pretty dominant. So, um, Mason Moore wears number 20. They may even start him today because it's one of those things where, uh, you know, I mentioned it yesterday on the Whiskey and Wine show, but I'll say it again uh, for those who might have missed it. You know, the the strategy changes each in each different um, uh, uh, round of the tournament. So a four-team regional, the strategy is different than your super regional is different than Omaha. And the reason it's different and it changes today is because well, yes, it's the best two out of three, and that's what you play all throughout the year. If you lose the first game, you're not guaranteed a third game, right? So, like, for Kentucky, you can't play this like, hey, let's try to win, you know, let's try to get a game out of this series, you know, because it'll help RPI and all this. Like, Kentucky's got to win today or their season's at, over. So, do you... Travis Smith should be in line for the start today. But do you say, we can't 
risk that. And so our best arm is <clears throat> is Mason Moore. Let's start, let's start him, maybe. Or maybe they start Travis Smith, and if he gets in any trouble, like in the first inning, you go get Mason Moore up. And that may be what they have to do. Because, again, like, you can't leave guys out there to figure it out. If you lose, it's over. So, I mean, Kentucky will have a much more uh, desperate approach today with the way they manage their pitchers, whereas LSU doesn't have to be. So, But they got a lot of arms. Kentucky does have a lot of arms available. Emmett Bean, what's going on from Gaithersburg, Maryland? Okay. Janet, curious if LSU will be the home team again today. Janet, my assumption is that, they'll, is that they're, they're, they they flip-flop so that uh, Kentucky would likely be the home team today. I don't know that, but that's going to be my assumption. And then if they do play game three, LSU would be the home team. Uh, Bo was glad Jay pulled skeins, let the crowd cheer. Yeah, he deserved the ovation for sure. I mean, that's why they went and got him right there. 101 pitches, two outs in the eighth. He wasn't going to come out for the ninth, so it let him get his ovation for sure. Um, Brett Gidry, looking forward to hearing AFR and Lafayette. Thanks so much, Brett. Yeah, man, two weeks from tomorrow. Fired up for it. Uh, Monday, June 26th, AFR and Lafayette and Lake Charles. Um, looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we've gotten a ton of support from our friends over there. Uh, at Delta Media already. So for those that aren't familiar, starting June 26th, that's two weeks from Monday, uh, 1037 in Lafayette, 1041 in Lake Charles are uh, flipping the ESPN affiliates, and they're going to carry AFR. So uh, tell your friends in the 337 Lafayette, Lake Charles, will be on the entire I-10 corridor. So looking forward to, to that in a couple of weeks. Uh, 415, hanging on with us there. Quick reminder, please, if you would, smash the like button if you're new. Subscribe up to the channel. Thad Landry, what's going on? Appreciate our Facebook uh, folks over here as well. Dwayne Forbes, Brandon LeBlanc. We crushed Tennessee for a small field. Did anyone see the size of Wake Forest Field? Yeah, I mean, they play in a bandbox as well. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Neil Weaver saying you should mean to go crush the people on Twitter who uh, were saying this team wouldn't win a regional. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, and I think the biggest effect that has is when you do get into postseason, if you play in a small field. Talk about this with South Carolina. You know, South Carolina, I felt, had a great chance to advance as long as they were at home because they got to, with that offense, got to play at their stadium. Well, they had to go play down in Florida, and they got swept in two games. I'm not surprised by it. So I think teams that play in a small field or play a certain way, um, it negatively affects them. I'll tell you, if Tennessee advances, that's going to be a problem for Tennessee because – they they smash homers. I get it. LSU does as well. But LSU, the box sometimes plays small because the wind will blow out. But the box is 405 in center. It's 330 down the lines and 385 to the alleys. The box is a is dimensionally a big field. Um, anyway. Uh, Rene DeBlanc, after all the hubbub yesterday, the game got played, LSU dominated. I'll take this outcome all day. Look, with LSU winning, absolutely. Had you flipped that on its head and LSU lost, we'd be sitting here going, LSU iced its own kicker, essentially. Uh, <laughs> Adam Font, no. Morning scone Cantori, super frustrating day. Sure ended well. That's a good way to put it. Cortland Jacob, crowd got treated to one hell of a performance. Um... Stephen Foyle, what's up? Love the rant yesterday. Uh, Clint Phillips from the Paris, what's going on? Didn't Kentucky win 45 games or so in the SEC? Uh, Kentucky finished uh, 42. Well, that was after postseason and everything. They were 42. And Kentucky's 40 and 20. Sorry, they're 40 and 20. Uh, they were 16 and 14 in the SEC. Um, the Sunshine Rant was hilarious. Ryan Solar, what's going on? William Jacob, want to see the Tommy White data on the blast so badly. I know me too. Carter Harris, what's going on? Uh, after the, I was at the game last night. It reminded me of 2000, <clears throat> 2009. You think Musso ate 14 gummies last night? I don't know. Um, 
Lewis Malhoy, good morning. If LSU makes Omaha, are they in the bracket with Florida or TCU? So Florida is on the other side of the bracket. So um, the if LSU advances, their first game would be against the Tennessee uh, Southern Miss regional winner. So you know if Tennessee does advance, they'd have to they'd have to face Skeens in the opener. So you you know, you feel good about that. Um, At LL Flooring. We're here Sorry, for hang on, hang on, hang with on, hang on. Sorry, pop up ads. Um, so LSU um, would be in um, the bracket with the Southern Miss Tennessee winner, and then the the top of the bracket is the Wake Forest Alabama winner and the Texas Stanford winner. So, uh. But Florida and TCU, who have already advanced, are on the other side of the bracket. Uh, TCU will play the winner of Oregon Oral Roberts. How about Oral Roberts? Blue and eight, nothing lead. Otherwise, they'd already be in Omaha. Um, I guess flip side of it is you could say Oregon blew a, an eighth inning lead yesterday. They'd be in Omaha, but either way. Um, and then Florida will play the winner of Duke, Virginia. Uh, which is obviously going to a game three today. Bo, a cruise missed on his last AB. I may cry. <laughs> um, Brian Penn, good morning from Vider, Texas. Great win. Could have played the game at two. Uh, are they giving up the shift next year? I, the MLB has banned the shift. I don't know that college baseball will. Strong side, you pitch hurt in relief today if needed. I mean, yes, absolutely. If it, it depends, it depends on the situation, the circumstance, but. You don't rule that out in any way. I mean, what I would say is this. If you're in a, let's say Floyd goes five innings and it's a four to three game, yes, Thatcher Hurd's getting the ball. I, I don't, I mean, I guess he could try to go Ackenhaus and Gidry, which you've seen him do, and then you'd have the option of Floyd going game three. But, you know, I, uh, I think it's a circumstance where you make the decision or you're just trying to go win it today. And if you're going to go try to win it today and be aggressive, you put your best guy out there. And I think that's what LSU is going to do. So what, that's what Jay did last week with, um, you know, with Hurd coming out of the rain delay after Floyd. And it was 100% the right decision to make. I mean, you you go win the game. You go put yourself into the winner's bracket. Go get your best guy. And they did. I think it was the right call. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Solar, which the most players with 10 or more homers LSU has had? I think it was 98. Um, Nineteen ninety eight. Uh, Furnace had 28. Uh, see, Cressy had 29. Furnace had 28. Trey McClure had 27. Uh, Danny Higgins had 15. Cedric Harris had 10. Clint Earnhardt had 12. Wes Davis had 10. Jeff Lamont had 10. That's eight. So he had eight that year. Um, check 97. All right, 97. Yeah, Larson, Furness, Barbier. Turner, Tom Bernhardt, Higgins, Casey Coons had 11. Jeez. Wes Davis had 16. Trey McClure had 12. So it was nine. So nine in 97. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, Trey Morgan's got nine homers now. And if he gets one more, he becomes the ninth on this team. check that just to make sure. So 97 is the answer. Um, but I think, uh, let me just make sure, but I'm pretty sure Trey, I know Trey is at nine, but I think if he gets one more, he becomes the ninth. So here you go. Cruz, White, Beloso, Joe Bear, Jones, Dugas, Thompson, Travinsky. Yeah, that's eight. So if Morgan hits one more, he'd be the ninth and they would tie 97. Good company, man. Good company if they can get there. Oh, 420 people watching. Shout out, Musa. 
Uh, bar pool, uh, roofing and flooring, nice diversification. Okay. Uh, Hudka roof. Huh? Um, will the game start on time today? I, I haven't looked at, uh, Eric, I haven't looked at the forecast this morning, but yesterday, today looked like it was going to be the best day of the weekend. So hopefully they, they get it in today. No issues. Thad Landry, how was vacation? We had a great time, man. Thank you for asking. Breezy bro, what's good? AFR and Lafayette rain will be nice. Yeah, man. So, and the, the signals 1037 and 1041 overlap. So if you're going wh wherever you are, if you're between Lafayette and Lake Charles, if one starts to fade out, you can pick the other one up there. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm fired up for it. I'm, I'm really, really excited. Something that's been in the works, and we've had we've had those flirtations for a long time, man. And um, I'm glad we're able to, to, to get the deal done. So, I'm just going to go to the bottom and come back up, work my way up so I can get to the recent comments. So, my apologies to, to y'all if I missed. There's just a ton of comments. It's kind of impossible to read them all. Uh, Kevin Boudreaux. Um, Let's see, Hunter Picard, how hype was Travinsky? How hype was T-Bob when Travinsky came up? Yeah, so for those that missed it, T-Bob last week on OTB, they had Hayden Travinsky on, and they made a bet that if Travinsky hits a three-run homer uh, in this Super Regional, T-Bob will shave his beard, leaving only the mustache and soul patch, basically go with the Travinsky look. And Travinsky came up yesterday with two on, and uh, he got hit by pitch. So I was videoing at Don Juan. So if you want to check that out, you can go look at my Twitter. I did tweet the video out. So if you want to see it, at Matt Moscona. DA, Matt, did you happen to go over the big names in the NFL that didn't get a fifth-year option? I mean, we we did at the time. Hey, babe. Um, but I'm, not, I'm just not going to do, like, football stuff here today, dude. I'm, I'm down for it, DA. My apologies. But, like, we've got over 400 people watching just on YouTube alone and... Facebook's at 70 viewers. So, I mean, got 500 people watching that, that are excited about, about the baseball. So, I'm going to stick with that today. Um, how can you argue both for pulling skeins early and that our bullpen blows big leads? Oh, I guess some of y'all are getting in a conversation back and forth. Um... <laughs> boondocking and rocking Matt where's your aluminum foil hat watch out I see a cloud <laughs> uh, Evan asked about the numbers on Tommy White's homer we do not have those so the uh, the track man data that LSU uses they are not able to to publish that during the NCAA tournament because it's not an LSU home game it's a NCAA tournament event that's just technically being hosted there so LSU can't use the the trackman data. Um, Jared Weems, favorite thing about yesterday was your weather update from your beautiful backyard. It was funny, made me laugh. Thanks for watching, Jared. I appreciate it, man. Just having some fun. Had to have some fun yesterday. Uh... Uh, Jason H, what kicks are we going with today, man? I don't, Jason, I, I should have showed you. Hey, bud. Drew. Drew. Nope. No. Um, let's see. Um, Jason, last night I had on my, uh, my purple and gold uh, Jordan 1 mids. I should have shown them on the... Uh, on the broadcast, my bad. Got a lot of compliments on them. Uh, Jesse Brown, what's the LSU single season RBI record? White has to be close. Um, uh, let's see. I would assume that it's Brandon Larson. Um, let me see. I'm going to have to go turn down the... Uh, Drew's watching the iPad. I'm going to have to go turn that down. Let's see.
Okay, here we go. There it is. Okay. Uh, single season RBI leader is Brandon Larson, 118. Uh, 118, Brad Cressy in 2000 at 106. Teddy Furnace in 96 had 103. Todd Walker in 93 had 102. But yeah, Brandon Larson in 97, 118 is the record. Um, and presently, Tommy White is at, what's it, 118 is the record. So 118 is the record, and Tommy White is presently at... Please load. There we go. Tommy White presently has 96. So 118 is the record. Tommy White's at 96. He's not going to catch Brandon Larson. Um, he's got 23 to go. He's not going to catch Larson. But he could pass um, Walker and Furness and Cressy. He, he could get close to those, um, depending on how deep LSU plays in Omaha. But uh, he won't catch Larson. Um, all right. Gasly Gamer, what's going on, y'all? Keep forgetting the two doubles in the game against Kentucky where Morgan and Cruz back-to-back -back lost fly balls in the sun. Was that the, the second game where that happened, or was that the third? I think that was the third game where that happened. Um, maybe when was the first game? What stands out most about the second, maybe that was, the, I don't know. What stands out most about the second game is, was that Kentucky where Morgan and Cruz both lost balls? Um, yeah, that, that was such a weird day. I mean, I remember, I remember it happening and it was like, man, that's it, the old adage about you can go to the ballpark and see something you have, you, every day you've never seen. And that was one of those days with, with things like that. Um, and it wasn't a fault of like, a Trey Morgan and Dylan Cruz, they're both magnificent players, but it's like, it was just a weird thing to see in consecutive ABs, right? Um... Portland, I'm not being concerned about the pitching because at their average, LSU scores more than they allow as long as the offense just average LSU is good. I mean, listen, I um, I might be the only, I don't know if I'm the only person, I'm one, of, I'm one of few people who didn't melt about the bullpen this year. My contention has been, and I've been consistent with this all year, and I'll, I'll remain consistent, that LSU has enough arms to win in Omaha, provided they stay in the winner's bracket. When everybody was melting, my rant was, look, they're going to win a regional. <laughs> you're going to beat whoever the four seed is, and you're going to start Paul Skeens in the marble game, and then someone's going to have to win a game and come back and beat you twice. They're not going to do that. So, and of course, LSU didn't start Paul Skeens in the marble game, but nonetheless, they won the regional. You're going to come back in the Supers. You're going to throw Paul Skeens game one. You're going to win it. they got to split the next two at the box. Can you do that? I'm going to say yes. So you go to Omaha. Paul Skeens gets the ball. I feel like you're going to get the winner's bracket. Can you win game two? If so, you're in the driver's seat. And if you manage to get your way through to the championship series, you reset the same thing where Skeens gets the ball and then you got to split the other two. So yes, it's possible. What it's not possible for this LSU team to do, in my opinion, is to play its way through a loser's bracket. So if you get to Omaha, let's say they win today, they get to Omaha. Let's say Skeens wins game one, but you lose game two. Okay, well then you'll have to come back in game three, probably with Hurd, provided he's available. And then you'll come back to come back and have to beat the two and O team twice with probably Javen Coleman, and then you'd have to come back with whatever is left, Blake Money, Sam Dutton, like while another team is still in its weekend rotation, effectively. So, and then if you manage to do that, you get to the championship series, you reset again. But. I don't think this team has enough pitching to come through a loser's bracket. That's been my contention all along. But with Skeens and the assumption, as we all make, that you give the ball to Paul Skeens, you're going to win that day. Um, with the rare exceptions of, like, South Carolina when the game got cut short due to rain, or his outing got cut short due to rain, or Arkansas in the SEC tournament because he was on a pitch count. And, you know, it was like, it was really just, hey, go throw 75 pitches and sit down. Um, when he's actually out there geared up, ramped up, go, going to win the game. I I don't know if anybody can, you know, can beat Skeens. So, <laughs> Peter, Matt saving her seats, choosing violence. I'm back to where, uh, uh, I'm back to where I was earlier. 
uh, what I was saying, should I go back on Twitter and, and seek everybody's uh, tweets about how the team can't hit in the clutch and the pitching stinks and the bullpen stinks and blah, blah, blah. Corlin says, I'll admit it right here. I was concerned about the hitting because they had been struggling. I wanted to see them heat up before the postseason to feel great about it. You know, but the thing is, it's such a day-to-day -day thing, though, Cortland. Like, in, I mean, in, th this isn't hindsight being 2020. Like, if anyone cares to, everything that I ever say is recorded. You can always go back and find my takes. It's why I try to be consistent on everything I say, and I'm not saying different things on different platforms, because then how do you keep everything straight? But even go back to the SEC tournament when people freaked out about, you know, leaving runners on base against Arkansas and Texas A&M. The point I made then was, I mean, I get it, and you'd like to see them hit there, but look at what they did offensively against South Carolina. And that was the one game in the SEC tournament where they felt like, hey, just to make sure, you know, after having lost the back-to-back -back series loss against Auburn and a terrible series loss against Mississippi State, you knew you were going to be a regional host, but to make sure you had a national seed locked, you felt like you go to Hoover and you win one, and it's like you felt going to Hoover like you'd already had it locked up, but... But winning one game there, you really had it. It was it was all done. And that's why, like, after that, Jay kind of emptied the bench. And, you know, Skeens was on a pitch count. And, you know, you had some... It wasn't like they weren't trying to win, but they also weren't all in to win, if that makes sense. And that's pervasive, man. So, you know, like... Uh, Jones started at first base against A&M. You know, you put Joe Bear at third base. Remember, Tommy White didn't play that game against Texas A&M. So, I mean, it was just, there. you know, Paxton Kling got the start in right field, uh, went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. So, you know, it's like if you were really, really all in, I mean, like if that was a regional championship game, Tommy White would have been playing. You know, Paxton Kling wouldn't have been in the lineup. Jared Jones wouldn't have been in the lineup. So, you're not wrong in saying that the offense struggled. I mean, I'm looking at right that box right here. They left 12 on base, and they struck out 11 times against Texas A&M. But they weren't, like, if they were really trying to win, Kling and Jones and uh, would, wouldn't have been in there, and White would have been in there. and So it's, you got to look at context, man. It, it, it matters, and look at what they've done since. Um... All right. Do a few more minutes here. I'm going to get to church here at 1130, so I need to shower and get dressed. But um, we appreciate you all so much for hanging out. As always, shout out to Brock, the Badgers North Beat, the Clinic, Hudco Roofing. You need North Beat, go to Brock. You need roof, holler at Hudco. I mean, there's 400 of you all watching on, on YouTube, 50, 80 of you watching on Facebook. So appreciate the 460 people watching live with us right now. Um, my ask is that if, if one of the 460-some-odd people watching us right now if you own a home, you live in Louisiana and you need a roof inspection or you know you have roof damage or maybe you've already called your adjuster and you have your scope of work and you're waiting to get that work done, we'd love it if you give us a chance to earn your business. Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Uh, Hudco's pinned in the chat. If you would take a quick second, just click the link and fill out the contact form on the homepage. Someone will be in touch. We'll schedule a free, no obligation roofing inspection. Um, and uh, you don't even have to be home. Like, Literally, someone will come, we'll walk it, mark it, chalk it, take photographs, give you a full inspection report of your roof. And if we recommend a uh, repair replacement, we'd be happy to help. Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Matt Irby said, Matt is Hudco, a reinforced roof, also sunshine resistant. Love the rant during the delay yesterday. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt I appreciate it. Jamie Delay, what's going on? A um, couple more. Uh... DA, wait, I, I'm sorry, I'm missing this whole conversation. So Kevin Boudreaux is saying, and y'all are going back and forth. Are y'all saying that they should have pulled Skeens earlier? Is that is that the is that the conversation? Okay, hold on. So Kevin says their lead's given up in the eighth or ninth inning. My whole point is Skeens pitched less than sixty pitches with an eight run lead. Could have pulled him if we needed him to come in to shut out. To shut, you can't. So, I'm sorry. So, Kevin, you're saying, just so, and I, I missed this part of the conversation, um, that a lot of you are going back and forth. Are you saying they should have pulled Skeens at 60 pitches so they could bring him back this weekend if they needed him? Like, is that what you're saying? 
Uh, Rosie Cammer, we killed Kentucky. We did. We did, Rosie. We did do that. Um, I don't know if that's what you're saying, Kevin. But if that's what you're saying, that um, there is literally a... Literally. This is not an exaggeration. This is not hyperbole. There is literally a 0% chance of that happening. Zero. Uh, zero. There is a 0% chance of seeing Paul Skeens twice in a weekend. Literally zero. I, I don't know that I can be any more adamant about this. Um, and that's not my opinion. Uh, Jay Johnson is, I've asked him point blank about arm care with Paul Skeens. Um, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, pitchers have routines. Their throwing days, they have their long toss days, they have their rest days, uh, they have their flat ground days, their, their bullpen day, like, they are on routines. And especially a guy like Skeens, who is about a month away from banking about nine million bucks, who is the best pitcher college baseball scene, probably since Strasburg. Um, there is literally no chance at all that Jay Johnson would run him out there twice in a weekend. Literally none. Zero. Uh, number one, you're not going to do anything whatsoever to compromise Skeens and his future. If you did, you would be eviscerated at every level of baseball and no elite arm talent would ever come play for you again. Um, that is, look, if this were high school ball or if this were college ball 30 years ago, those could have been conversations to have. But if you're suggesting that LSU should have pulled Paul Skeens yesterday with a big lead so that they could bring him back later in the weekend, that is fundamentally absurd. There is... That is not even a conversation worth having. That's like saying, hey, Matt, we should talk about maybe, like, what if you became the LSU head football coach? Like, there's no, it's literally that absurd. It, it will never happen. Um, anyway. No, and listen, it, it, there, this is not, um, y'all don't need to attack Kevin. Like, everyone's, everyone is entitled to an opinion on certain things, but you just got to be very clear, Kevin, like what you're saying or what you're suggesting has li literally, like the literally 0% chance of happening. Um, there, there, like, there is just literally no, no chance at all ever that that would happen. And, and it's not even a question of, whether you trust the bullpen or don't trust the bullpen, or if it's middle relief or late, or late, late relief, like none of that matters, like at all, zero. Like that, that is not at all in any way a consideration. It is, it is literally a, a simple, a simple issue of arm care for your elite starting pitchers, keeping them on their routine, Protecting a guy that's about to make $9 million and be the first or second pick in the draft. And I remember having this conversation with Maneri years ago. And, and I mean, this is, this has been years now, but you know, you know, Paul and I had this conversation where he's like, listen, you've got to be, and they, I mean, they would obviously, they obviously want to protect the, the players anyway. Like it's, but his point was, if you even thought about doing something like bringing a guy up multiple times in a weekend, and look, to show you how quickly it changed, look at what happened with Lewis Coleman. Like the way they used Coleman in 09, he would close on Friday, and then he would start on Sunday. And he won SEC Pitcher of the Year. And it was fine because Lewis 
had a little bit of a rubber arm and and you didn't see him and you for him to close you're talking maybe a dozen pitches then he'd get Saturday off and then come back and pitch on Sunday and you know pit, give you give you four or five innings whatever it may be and that were fine but even that uh even that could never happen now um I remember asking him that question about Zach Hess because that's why I asked the question so they did that with Coleman in 09. And then, of course, Hess had the great 17 out of the bullpen. And then they were moving him into the starting role. And I remember asking, like, could you see a scenario where you use Hess like you used Coleman, where you he closes on Friday and then starts on Sunday? And it was like 100% absolutely not. We could never do that. Like, it's just the, the game had changed so much. Arm care, even in that short window of seven, eight years, arm care had changed. Um, uh, perception, all that stuff. Uh so yeah, so I know this is a little bit of a of a of a, of a tangent here, but to the guy uh, and Kevin, it's not a criticism of you or whatever you're saying. It's it's just literally that's that is that would never even be a consideration. Murder giraffe, what evidence does that dude have that would suggest that would Skeens pitch out of the bullpen? Uh, less is more. I don't think there's ever been a pitcher like Skeens in college and stuff about is out of this world. I mean, Strasburg was like that. Um, you know, when he was at San Diego State in 2009, 2010, around there. It's, he's the best one since Strasburg, I would say. You know, Trevor Bauer. In, uh, at UCLA, I mean, they, they've they've had great pitchers like this, but he's he's in that conversation. Uh, TK, I wonder if Jerry Sullivan survived the seven hour delay. Um, Corlin, didn't I see Skeens has even said it? Rest and recovery is what made a difference from the season. It, that's a big part of it. Has been, I mean, I was told this before the season even started. I was talking to to a buddy who's a scout and was like, man, what's, you know, I don't remember Skeens being this. And he's like, well, he wasn't at Air Force. I mean, he was great. He's still in 95, but you know, number one is when you're going, th when you're at the Academy, you're, you're still an Air Force. Um, you're at, you're at the Air Force Academy. You're waking up early. You're going on long runs. Like you're not conditioning your body solely for baseball. You're conditioning your body for the Air Force. Um, that was one, two, he was hitting as well. So he didn't have just full rest like he would when he was only pitching. Um, they said the, the pitching lab at LSU helped tremendously because they, they were able to look at his mechanics and everything and make him more efficient. And then Wes Johnson got a huge compliment as well. Like Wes Johnson is one of the best pitching coaches and worked with Skeens and on being more efficient and getting his velocity up and all that stuff. Ronnie, they brought starters back before in sand weekend. Has it been 30 years? Is it just because it's Skeens? Would they do it with Floyd, for instance? Um, I think you would have to look at circumstance, Ronnie. Like, who, like who is the pitcher? Um, is it the last game of the season? Like, if you start... I mean, you see this in Major League Baseball, where, I mean, Schilling famously did it in the Bloody Sock series. But um, you know, pitching multiple times on short rest, but um, but no, like you're not. I'm trying to think of any circumstance, not not with schemes, absolutely not with schemes. But I'm trying to think of any circumstance where you would do that. I can't think of it. Golf South, Matt, do you think there's literally, and I mean literally, zero chance? Zero chance would come out of the pen after starting two days before. <laughs> was, was I emphatic enough? Uh, truth hurts, FYI, Matt, when you, when you say the word elite, you give everyone in the chat anxiety. Why? P. Scott, I'm not a baseball fan, but I love to see baseball winning. TK was Oliva back working behind the scenes yesterday. I mean, yesterday was the, the only equivalent of yesterday was the Hurricane Matthew thing in 2016. Uh, yesterday was the only equivalent. 
Uh, that's the only equivalent I can remember in my lifetime or something that absurd. <laughs> Uh, P. Scott, I finally get what you were saying about going after Coleman harder. No proven second wide receiver, but a lot of talent. Coleman. Let's see, speaking of West, that man was all in yesterday. Going to miss him. He's had a great year, man. Um, I know a lot of people have poo-pooed the staff for struggles this year, but that, as we've said, is also to ignore the very real issues of losing three of your top arms and also ignoring the development a lot of guys have made, like Skeens and Hurd throughout the year, and a freshman like Herring having the role, the impact he has, and Gavin Guidry not pitching in the fall at all and becoming what he's become. Like You have to acknowledge the good as well. Floyd, who was, remember, remember last year, like Floyd would not even throw a breaking ball. Ty Floyd would not throw an off-speed pitch. Like 90% of his pitches were fastballs. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. While I agree with you about Skeens, I'm sure Stanford started their race twice last weekend in the regionals. I would have to see what happened. I don't know. I don't know who who the ace would be and in what scenario they threw him. But I'm telling you, like, when you have an elite pitcher, and you're saying you agree, with schemes like he is not pitching multiple times in a weekend. Like, it's not happening. Um, Emmett Bean, all I think of his big band on the Grand Slam. Yeah, I mean, look that that was an era where they did it. Um, Kyle Peterson. I mean, Kyle Peterson was the best pitcher in the country in 1997. He was an All-American at Stanford. And LSU beat him the first game. And then when Stanford came and had to beat LSU twice, uh, they brought Peterson in out of the bullpen. He was wearing tennis shoes. He had to go to the bullpen and put his spikes on. And they roughed him up again. It was just, it's just a different era. Wilk, are you surprised Nunez retired? No, I'm not. Um, Terrio had time to drive to 38 and make it back in time. All right, let's see. Um, all right, y'all. I think we are just about done. Oh, oh God. I have to go. I have to be right to church. Okay. Y'all have an awesome day. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate y'all. Um, it's so weird. Like, I keep seeing, um, the same. So, Bo, I don't know if Bo Revere is still watching, but, um, the comment that you made about the football environment, like that comment popped up on my phone screen like a hundred times. I realized you only posted it once, but it like, it popped up like, I don't know why, but there's three or four comments that are posting like a hundred times on my screen. So that's weird. I realized you didn't post multiple, multiple times to my apologies. Okay, I gotta go. Y'all have an awesome day. LSU at five o'clock today. Uh, I'll try to fire up a post game show. Plan to do that. So um, hope to see y'all then. As always, shout out to Brock. If you need North Peace, go to Brock. If you need Root, give us a shout out to Hudco. Hudco's pin in the chat. Love telling you about Restored Motions. Shout out Crystal Poche. And uh, if you got pain, book a session. And uh, ProChargeEV, ProChargeEV.com. Okay, y'all have an awesome day. We'll see you. Peace.